First drive, first afternoon, beautiful elephant against the, the black, and I'm using the low angle screen to get some nice images of it against the sky, and I'm gonna go and do that now. Well, like all of my wildlife encounters, it didn't quite turn out like that. The elephant was very relaxed, the sky was beautiful, amazing cloud formations, amazing light, everything was good, he was feeding. I took some landscapes, I took some portraits for variation, which was really, really nice, and all was good in the world, and then he looked at us. Started to shift his weight in his front foot, and I knew that from 20 years of working with elephants, he was gonna come and take a closer look. Not aggressive, just inquisitive. That's what they are, just inquisitive. He wants to come and have a look, and he did that typical elephant thing where they don't run at you full speed, or uh, well, let's hope they don't. Um, he doesn't walk, he kind of did a half gait to us, he came to within 10 feet. Now, an elephant, you know, coming to you within 10 feet, even in the vehicle, you're going, whoa, in the back, whoa, like that. And all the time I was going, whoa, I was taking some stills uh, as he was coming, and I got this really nice one, and I processed it with a fine art feel, because I like this kind of idea that you process every picture as an individual, you don't process them all the same. So I hope you like that. Um, anyway, when he sat really close to us, I thought, you know what, I want to get a picture of the eye, because the eye was glowing red in the last rays of the sun. Beautiful texture on him, it looked amazing. But I couldn't get close enough with my lens. I thought, oh, should I change my 100 to 400? And I thought, no, do you know what? Typical me, I'll drop it on the floor or bang it on my head or something. It'll make a noise and it might scare him. I don't want to scare him, I don't want him to react. So what I'll do, I'll shoot with the 24105. There's plenty of pixels on the EOS R. I've got enough pixels to crop later on and get this nice image that you see here. Now, I wasn't happy wholly taking that. I wanted to take something moody and atmospheric and use the light. So I put the camera into mono mode. I often like to do that to shoot my black and whites in camera with a red filter. Sounds like I'm a monochrome expert, doesn't it? <laughs> I wish. Um, and it created this amazing, I think, atmospheric picture of an elephant. Yeah, I cropped the trunk off and all that kind of stuff, but it's not about the trunk, it's about the light and the shadow and the mood and the atmosphere. And I think it does very well at that. Now, at this point, the elephant did something really, really amazing. It started to put its trunk out and do that to us. And it shows he's very, very relaxed. And I didn't want to scare him. I thought, got to get this picture. So I got the screen of the R, got it like that. Turned the R to portrait mode. And what I did, um, I turned on the silent continuous mode that's brand new in the firmware. So it's got a silent mode where when you press the shutter button, that's all the sound you can hear. You can't actually hear anything, um, which is great for me, great for the elephant because it won't react. I never want an elephant or anything to react to anything I'm doing. So I lowered the camera really slowly down the side of the vehicle, very slowly. He was still doing that. As soon as I got the composition right by looking at the screen, I started to take pictures and he continued doing that because he couldn't hear anything. It was an absolutely superb encounter with an elephant. When I got back into the dark room, <laughs> second bedroom upstairs, um, I put it into Silver FX Pro because I wanted to create something a bit more black and white, something a bit more interesting of that. And I actually prefer this to the colour one. I don't know what you think, but I actually prefer it because it adds a bit more mood and atmosphere. At that point, the elephant walked off. I always take pictures of the elephant um, walking off. Uh, a backside is great of an elephant. It's got a lovely shape, lovely textures, beautiful tail. Just make sure the business end isn't in use. He then started to walk under a ridge. Tree, cloud, light. Light on the grass, amazing. I took some wide angles of it, it looked fantastic. Then he cleared that part and we got a little bit closer on the ridge and it was amazing. I darkened exposure by minor two stops, the light coming in from the front. It was an awesomely atmospheric elephant picture. No, that's not the truth, is it? I darkened the exposure and keen viewers will have seen this because the elephant didn't have four legs that day. It had five legs that day, one of the legs, was five, number five, it was as long as all the others, but annoyingly, it was catching the light, the fifth leg, and it was catching the light more than the others, and I'm never gonna win the wildlife talk for the year with beautiful bull elephant walking across the plains in last light with five legs, one of which is catching the light. So I had to darken the exposure to make sure um, <laughs> uh, it would get published in places and wouldn't cause too much offense, but there you go. I did that using the control ring at the front. So I hope that you've seen that elephants are fantastic and you've seen all these pictures. And photographers, you can see that this was probably a five minute encounter and yet I've managed to take a whole series of pictures to tell the story um, of it. I wish I'd have taken some video, I just didn't have the time to do it. Um, everyone, I really want you to know that elephants are awesome. You can see here that this elephant was just coming to have a look. It was just inquisitive, it was just really cool. It was a wonderful encounter. Elephants are worth conserving. They're worth spending our precious time ensuring that they're here for future generations. They're just simply awesome. And with that, I'll say goodbye and see you next time.